Welcome, it's No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. I am your host, Rick Becker, our co-host, Lori Hintz. Hello there, glad I to be here. I am just frantically searching, and um, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm a little, I'm wound right now, folks. He's a I'm little wound. annoyed. <laughs> I am a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot annoyed, and the reason is this. Uh, we just had the, I'm looking it up here, pause, okay. Some of you may recall uh, that I've been talking about an opportunity for income tax relief, for any kind of tax relief for the citizens of North Dakota. And we had one opportunity left. Bills have been brought up for property tax relief. I had a bill to eliminate property tax. All these bills died. We had bills to um, give income tax relief in the way of uh, not having to pay uh, income tax on your social security benefits, right. which is really like a double tax. All of those get killed. So I was pleading with people, look, there's one last opportunity. And this it's, was the hog house that got this moved This is the hog house, yeah. yeah, it was some other bill, but, but it, what it was is, is uh, uh, Representative Headland's bill from last session, except even watered down a little bit. What it did, it said, it said if we have leftover funds, leftover money Super after our budget stabilization fund is full with the whatever is $759 million. When that's full, and if we have leftover money, and if that amount, anything over $65 million of leftover money, which is above the budget stabilization fund, if we have any money left over, it will go to buy down, in essence, income tax, and then the tax commissioner would lower the rate and everyone can pay less income taxes. What a great plan. Why would you be opposed to that? Why would you be opposed to that? The only opportunity to give tax relief to the citizens of North Dakota, and the worst thing of all is that it's in light of the fact that we are spending a record amount of money. We are going to break last session's record budget, and we may break it by a billion dollars. Our spending is off the charts. And in the next segment, I'm going to be talking to you about what some of the things we're spending it on. It's going to make your head explode. <laughs> And you think that you think that when we are spending it on all of these pet projects, we could at least have the decency to say, you know what, we're going to counterbalance that just a little bit with some tax relief for the citizens of North Dakota. The last it's a supermajority of Republicans <laughs> in the House and in the Senate. It's ridiculous. And they're giving the middle finger to the taxpayers of North Dakota. It is. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm just. I, so obviously today, the last chance <sighs> came up and they squashed it. Yes. And I'm going to tell you there are six senators that voted for tax relief Write them for down, you. people. Conley, Diane Larson, Ole Larson, Doug Larson, Meyer, and Wanzik. Wow. Every other senator found some reason to vote against the last hope for you to have tax relief. Wow. So you're left out. You are left out. So the entire session, not one bill. Oh, I'm sure there's some little tiny, little tiny thing that, that, that they'll say. It has a minuscule component to a very so select what an group. opportunity this was. You know, you, know who got, you know who got tax relief? See, uh, Senator Bell uh, is the chair of Senate finance and tax right. um, and for some reason she just she wanted this bill dead and we showed it last night and she on the floor I didn't watch it because I was doing a Facebook live at the same time that I didn't know it was on the Senate floor frustrating um, use the three-legged stool like oh we have this it's very it's a very elementary explanation we have property tax we have sales tax and we have income tax and we need all three to support the state just like a three-legged stool if you take one away the stool tips over and you and I gave the example last night there are nine other states that have no income tax so the stool analogy doesn't work. If you have eight states in which <laughs> they, they don't have, have three legs, you have to pick a different analogy. <laughs> right. I mean, that is a great explanation for a kindergartner. It's not good enough for the taxpayers of North Dakota. Exactly. But, but the, very same, the very same chairman of finance and tax in the Senate, very happy to give tax breaks to the coal industry. Coal severance tax. You get, you get a five-year break. That's over $100 million. Taxpayer, zero. zero. Coal, $100 million. Mm, that's 
That's good to know. I don't know why I gave a zero for 100, but it was easier than going one, zero, 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 zero. Right. Yeah. Uh, wow, so I don't know what to say, man. Oh, I don't know what to say. And, and my fellow legislators wonder why grassroots conservatives are angry. This is why they're angry. Don't, do not look <laughs> at me. Right? This is why people are getting out in droves in their districts right there. It is. You're I'm just exactly really, right. I'm just beside myself. I, I just tell. don't know what to do. I just, yeah. I mean, I've been there. This is, this is my fifth <laughs> session. This is year number nine. Mm -hmm. What the hell am I doing there? Throw up your hands and say, this is ridiculous. I'm, seri I'm, I'm yeah. serious. What the hell am I doing there? I, I, yeah. I, just, I, I just don't even feel, I don't even feel like showing up. It's so what am I doing there? Well, is session close to closing now? Um, it'll probably go till Thursday night, maybe Friday. Uh, we had on our <laughs> list of what we were going to talk about something different, but this is very, very frustrating, and I can tell that you're exercised where, about Where it. are we at with time? We were going to um, talk about Bismarck School Board meeting last yeah. night. So the, the mask mandate was lifted. Okay. So the, yeah. So the good news is Bismarck, and you said now Mandan. And now Mandan, yeah, I got this this afternoon, 5.30. It says the right. Mandan Public Schools Smart Restart team has decided to adjust the mask requirement so to strongly recommended but not required on school property effective May 3rd, 2021. Based on this recommendation, MPS administration will be meeting in the next few days to address questions and additional information will be made available in the coming days. So both Mandan and Bismarck schools now Strongly recommended, not required in their schools. Yeah. So that's great news. Right. And, you know, the parents have been speaking out, and I've been, I've been supportive of that and trying to get the word out. Mm -hmm. um, pull up the, if you would, this is from the North Dakota Department of Public Instruction. You see, there, there is an aspect to this um, where they say we are not the authoritative or enforcement entity for COVID-related matters. It is the state health officer. And so, Lori, I wanted to give you one reason why, why we can put in the, it's okay, we understand school board members and superintendent why you're resistant to the lifting the mask mandate, and that is, according to the health department, vis-a-vis -vis Governor Doug Burgum. Right. It's his fault, yep. but they had in a thing, if, two, if both kids aren't wearing a mask and there's a contact, then you have to isolate. And so they were worried about kids isolating, kids missing graduation, et cetera. You know, as sad as that is, it came from the health department and the, and the governor's office. That's one good reason. Go to the next uh, graphic, if you would. This, this was in the paper article. today. This was in the Bismarck Tribune. You see it says Bismarck Schools to End District Mask Rule May 4th. The subtitle is Decision Based on Staff, Vaccinations, and Low Virus Numbers. So I wanted to also say this as much as, and I, I took a little flack from some school board members. Oh, you for, did? Yeah, did you? I did. Um, well, nobody likes somebody putting their nose in, in their business, and, and they felt like, in the respect, I just told you that their hands maybe have, have been tied, tied somewhat. Mm -hmm. However, the problem is you're giving mixed messages because from the previous school board, the superintendent said, well, it depends on how our teacher vaccinations are coming. No, it doesn't, and it shouldn't, right. And but that's part of what you're saying, and, and the numbers. None of this should have been, we should not have been masking our kids and isolating our kids because we're not sure whether the teachers are vaccinated or not because the studies have shown the kids don't transmit it to the teachers. So we have, you know, I, I'm kind of torn here because you got the governor causing the real big issue through the Department of Health for the schools, but then you have all this wishy-washy, you know, mixing in the, the, the actual things with the fake things, and so anyway, the bottom line is, it's no longer there, and I hope, folks, that we learned a lesson. If when fall comes, a mask mandate is re-implemented, re we must stand up immediately. First. Immediately, right and stop that. it, not wait exactly. for week after week and meeting after meeting. So. All right, we're gonna be back. We're gonna be talking about cronyism. Stick with us. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. 
Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Arrow Service Team does it all. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature gyros with the region's only gyro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. Hey Bucks fans, if you're planning an outing, birthday, or employee appreciation night, then bring your group out to the Buck Stop for a night of fast-paced, high-scoring football. Your group will receive discounted tickets, options for reserved seating, scoreboard messages, VIP services, swag, and a space to gather during the game. You can also participate in pre-game ceremonies, halftime entertainment, in-game contests, and more. Call 701-595-0771 or visit bismarckbucks.com forward slash tickets. All GA is first come, first serve. We'll see you on the turf. Go Bucks! All right, folks, we're back. It's no apologies on Beck, and um, we're going to talk about cronyism. Well, you talked about it last week while I was gone with Andrea. I did. And I did, but I've been following up on it and watching the conference committees closely and interpreting the language in the conference committees. Mm. <clears throat> so in cronyism, there are, there are several bills which have cronyism in them, and, and you know, corporate welfare is the term that's commonly used. What we mean basically is that taxpayer dollars are going to fund private business or something that private business should be funding themselves. It's going to sort of like you help me and you know who knows maybe down the road uh, uh, I'll help you whatever it might be. So there's one bill in particular there's two actually one is the OMB office management and budget and that's mm -hmm. going to be coming up probably probably only on Thursday I'm guessing that's going to have some crap in it um, but the one that's famous is the Department of Commerce bill and that's because the Department of Commerce is actually their mission is corporate welfare. Their mission is cronyism. And um, so th this is chock full. So Senate Bill 2018, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you, a, a, it's a little spoiler alert. The conference committee, so the Senate passed their version and they put a bunch of crap in it, uh, some. The House then added a whole bunch more crap and then they passed it. And then the Senate and the House are coming together to try and work it out. Fortunately, at least one of the items, the Senate is saying, I don't know, not so mm. much. So tonight, right before they decided that the taxpayers don't deserve any tax relief whatsoever, uh, they did kill the conference committee report, so it's going to go back, and there's a reasonable chance that one of these items is going to be removed, which wow. would be fantastic. Well, that's good news. And it's actually the first item we're going to talk about. Okay. So um, let's pull up the first graphic. You've got, off the bat, Buffalo City Park. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge theme park in the city of Jamestown, North Dakota. Now, what's really great about this is that it is going to go on state-owned land. Hmm. Okay, so it's a huge private development going on state-owned land. Then, the organization needs to get a loan from the state for $60 million. $60 million. They need to come up with $5 million themselves. Oh. And once they get a $60 million loan from the state and a lease from the land for the land from the state and have $5 million, we're going to give them another $5 million. Wait, 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 wait. You know, it gets better. Oh. <laughs> so 
we were having a heart attack about this. Right. While we were having a heart attack, like this is overboard, mm -hmm. what they did is they said, you know what, we're going to add two words. So it's a loan or investment. So now it's not even a $60 million loan, folks. The state is going to supply the land, supply $5 million, and supply a $60 million investment. So does that mean we own part of it? Uh, do we have equity? It's on state We're going to get paid back some percentage over some years that we don't know how many if years. If it's an investment, do you not get return When on do your we get investment? it back? What is the return? So you've got a developer that's going to come up with $5 million, Wow. Gets, gets cheap land, $60 gets $60 million. million dollars in a fake loan, and gets $5 million just handed. Unbelievable. I am going to get into this business. This <laughs> is amazing. Okay, next graphic. Okay. Here's another thing. Now, keep in mind again. Uh, the Senate does not think that you deserve any tax relief. I'm just saying. Um, $900,000 to Frost Fire Ski Resort. That's, that's it right there, folks. You're, you're that's gonna... a private resort. Yeah, it's yeah. $900,000 because, uh, you know, because. Okay. Yeah. Next up. Next up, the Nakoma Pyramid. Yes. Nakoma Pyramid. Well, that We're... was decommissioned, was it not? Yeah, well, it was sold in 2012 to the Hutterites for half a million dollars. It cost like $4 billion to build it. Mm -hmm. The Hutterites bought it 2012 for half a million, and then they sold off a good part of it to the Cavalier Job Development Authority for $463,000. So now the, the Cavalier Job Development Authority is saying, hey, we got a great idea. We could create some jobs if only the state gives us a bunch more money. So $600,000 to try and de develop some jobs at the pyramid, folks, um, but no tax relief for you. Next up. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. It's only $100,000 for someone to make a movie. Someone wants to make a movie in North Dakota, and they said, hey, state of North Dakota, I'd like $100,000 to make a movie, and then I'll let you use some of the clips of the movie in your tourism ads. <laughs> and the legislators said, they went for it? Yes, yes, that's a great idea. Oh, $100,000, wow. are you sure you don't need more? Oh my! We've got a bunch extra because we're not giving the taxpayers any tax relief. We, if you want more, we'll give you more. That's a great idea. <laughs> That's a, I'll tell you what, that's a heck of an idea it is there. Done. We should make two movies. Oh my goodness. Wow. Uh, so there you go, $100,000 for that. Next up. Now this one, maybe, maybe you feel ambivalent about, okay? A million bucks, uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, let's just say half it of like it. It's like Medora's Amphitheater. It is, it's Medora's Amphitheater. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a million dollars to build a special slanted elevator, an incline elevator. Now, half of it's coming from COVID money. And people may say, oh, gosh, that's a great attraction for North Dakota. How that's does fine. does COVID money have anything uh, to do well, with Well, it's for infrastructure. Okay. Okay. But, but what I wanted to show there, you see, oh, bleep, bleep, oh bring bleep, it back. Bleep. You see on the, on the, on the right, right there, yeah. that's, the, that's the path. Correct. You see Access people path. are being brought up in these little uh, golf carts if right. they're, if they're uh, having access or I've accessible problems, right? Mm -hmm. So I just don't know that taxpayer money, I mean, if the Theodore Roosevelt uh, foundation wants to put it in and if we do want to put in coronavirus money okay fine I just don't think we need another half million dollars for that I mean that's a heck that's a heck of a nice situation okay Jeez. next up Grand Sky Grand Sky in in Grand Forks mm -hmm. now this this guy's super smart this is a private developer and here's here's a building and each one of you see you see strip malls around right sure and um, government typically at least as far as I'm aware doesn't help the developer pay for those. Not uh, usually. No, no, no. But this guy. Uh, this is a strip mall? Seven million dollars. A strip mall. Now, now, yes, that's how I'm presenting it, Lori. I want to okay. be fair. This is a special strip mall that's on and immediately adjacent to the, um, the, uh, the Air Force Base at the airport. Okay. And so they have okay. access to it. And so his tenants are very specialized. Nevertheless, he's a private developer developing a really super cool specialized strip mall for businesses to come. And so we're going to let him, we gave him money already. He didn't spend it all. So we're going to let him carry $3 million of that money over from last biennium. And we're going to give him another $7 million. But no tax relief. No tax relief, folks. Psh, psh, psh. All right. That's all I've got for you. Um, who knows what's going to happen? I don't know. Uh, wow. You know what? I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to put on some little? music. I'm going to put on some music. I'm going to jam. And when the board lights up, I'm just going to randomly press a button. Because why the hell not? Why <laughs> the hell not? Next up is going to be Mr. Robert Harms, special guest. We're going to tell you all about him. Stick with us.
When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Prairie Patriot Firearms and Training is the region's most complete gun and training center. Five lane indoor range, a gun shop, and a certified training facility. Firearms training courses are offered daily for new, intermediate, and advanced shooters. If you're not comfortable in a classroom setting, Prairie Patriot offers one-on-one -on -one private lessons. From basic self-defense training to concealed weapons testing, along with a full line of guns, ammunition, holsters, and concealment clothing. Prairie Patriot, 3930 Memorial Highway, prairiepatriot.com. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature gyros with the region's only gyro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck, your after-hours oasis of sanity, despite feeling otherwise. I'm your host, Rick Becker, <laughs> co-host Lori Hintz, and Bob Harms. Good to have you. Welcome. Very good to I'm have you. to have you on the show. Describe yourself as a taxpayer, a Always. lawyer, and one of the architects of the Legacy Fund, which was crafted back in 2000, well, like earlier than 2010, right? It was voted in in 2010? 2010, it was uh, voted on by the voters of North Dakota, yeah. Yeah, so Legacy Fund, Discussions are everywhere. They're in a multitude of bills. We hear complaints of this and we hear concerns of that, but can you give us, start us off. So since you're one of the architects, you know the history of it from the get-go. Sure. Get, inform our viewers, because you know it's been now over, well over 10 years since, yeah. you, since the inception of this. Um, let them know what, what it's all about. Well, the Legacy Fund really grew out of what was known as the Permanent Oil Trust Fund that was created in 1997 and under Governor Schaefer's administration, he saw our state spending going like this and that we were spending a declining revenue stream oil. And so he created, with the help of the legislature, a permanent oil trust fund in 97. Um, that continued, it uh, accumulated uh, some monies in the Hoven administration and then the governor at that time and the legislature began to invade the permanent oil trust fund, which become uh, uh, became known as the not so permanent oil trust fund, <laughs> yep. right. and so they were t they were taking it. So a group got together in 2007, put a measure on the ballot to create a constitutionally protected trust fund in 2008. That was defeated. Governor Hoban actually campaigned against it, which I was, I was um, a little unhappy with. But mm -hmm. <laughs> and so then we took another swing at it in 2000. 
nine, reconfigured it, and um, I went to the ballot, uh, talked to the voters, said, hey, this is something that will ensure our children's future once oil revenues decline. The, com the uh, concept was basically take oil, convert it to cash, keep the cash, and use the earnings right. to replace oil revenues when they decline, which we know they, they will. They happen. And so that's the basic uh, concept and uh, the idea behind the Legacy Fund. Today we have uh, 8.2 billion dollars in it, uh, about 2.6 of which is from earnings. Uh, mm -hmm. The way the measure was crafted, uh, the legislature couldn't address or uh, use any of the earnings until 2017. And so we have now $8.2 billion in the legacy fund that's there to serve the purpose that we, uh, that we just talked about. Interesting. Yeah, to, are, are you wishing now that the, uh, the timing for tapping into the earnings might have been pushed later? Or are you, I, are you I am. No, I think that it would have maybe been smart if we would have put it off another five or six years. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, the more, I mean, we learned this when we were kids, the power of compound interest. And the more we put those earnings back into the bank, the bigger the fund is going to go. And the, the more it will be able to meet our needs in the future when oil revenues decline. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Well, I know one of the bills that uh, they were looking at with some of the streams and they're trying to put it into a bill that also had pension reform in it. One of the stream concepts was that there would be a specific stream that ran back to go into the uh, principle of the legacy fund. And I thought that was a great idea. Right, yeah. And I think some of that conversation is still in play. Um, I, I don't know where that's going to go. The only bill, and we'll, we can talk about three or four of the bills that have addressed legacy funds uh, in, in, a, in a minute or two, there's only one left in play, and that's House Bill 1380. That's what's called the Legacy Streams Bill, mm -hmm. and it's got about 10 different buckets, and we can talk about whether or not that's a good policy format or structure uh, to use in, in legislation and in using and managing this fund. But, you know, one of the things that I think um, we should all talk about is, and one of the concerns I've had is where is the state going financially? I mean, this, this fund was created to do just what I said. Um, when oil revenues go down, this fund should be there and its earnings should replace that declining revenue stream. Right. And so uh, what I've done is I've gone, and I think you've got some graphics that show the general fund that uh, we have in, in North Dakota. And so what I've done is I've taken this 20-year period, these are legislative council figures, mm -hmm. We started at $1.75 billion in 2000, and, and today we're at $4.8 billion. That's, that's a 13.7% annual growth rate. So I thought, all right, well, let's see where we go at that same rate of growth in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And if you do the math, you end up with $17 billion general funds. Wow. Which is just mind-boggling to me. Horrific. Yes. <laughs> Um, so keep that number in mind, $17 billion by 2031. And then let's go to the next graph because the next uh, visual, one of the other things that we did, these are le legislative council numbers as well, and go to the bottom and that 27% number, basically what that says is the general fund that we have in North Dakota, one of every $4 comes out of the oil and gas revenue. So that $17 billion that we were talking about uh, 10 years mm -hmm. from now, mm -hmm. that's going to be, if we stay the course and we continue to rely on the oil industry to the tune of 27% of the general fund, we end up with $4.6 billion that we need from the oil industry in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so if we have a hiccup... yeah. Is that um, even sustainable? Well, that's, and that's the concern I think that we all should have. I mean, I, I think we should use the legacy fund wisely, but I'm also concerned about the state's financial uh, condition and where we are going to be 10 years from now if mm -hmm. we need $4.6 billion yeah. from the oil industry just to stay even at what we're doing today. Yep. You know, that's, that, that's, that's a concern. I, I think that's a, a brilliant observation because the hiccup, is inevitably going to come. Right. It will. And we are rating, and I'll say rating the legacy fund, even yep. though we're not taking the principal, right. but we are taking the earnings which would have gone to the principal to build up for when we have the hiccup. Right. Because as it stands now, when we're 
finding every way we can to spend all of the earnings and we're preventing the principal from growing. When we have the hiccup, the principal won't be big enough to provide the earnings that can cover the hiccup. Right, right. And I don't, I'm, apparently most of my fellow legislators don't see it that way. Well, those corrections always come. You always have booms and busts, and it's inevitable, so why not plan? Well, they do, and we have another visual. This is another product from the Legislative Council, and they, it just reminds oh, us yeah. of our 2015 bust. And uh, at that time, we ended up invading and using every savings account that we had banked over years and years to stay even because of the decline in the oil revenues in the 2015-2017 cycle. Uh, we had a special session, uh, took a billion dollars out of the budget, and you know the, the graph shows we took another 7% reduction after uh, they uh, reconvened. And so um, that's just an example most recently about uh, of the hiccups that um, we uh, risk by being so dependent on, uh, on oil revenues. The other thing that was interesting about that graphic um, the top line shows that 50% of our revenues in the state come from the oil industry. 27% uh, of the general fund is from that, uh, that industry. But it's, yep. uh, it's a big deal, and um, it's something that every taxpayer should be concerned about. I'm particularly concerned about it, not so much now, but 10 years from now. In the future. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I don't know. We're putting ourselves in a precarious situation. Yeah. And I don't know if it's going to be because of things like a Biden administration. I don't know if it's going to be weird um, fluctuations in supply and demand of oil. Um, I, I just, I don't know. But the thing is, we have to be prepared for it. Yeah. Pipelines being shut down. A um, number of things can happen with this administration, too. Right. We just have to be ready for that. Yeah. Or Elon Musk Elon has Musk, the breakthrough right? that actually has, right? you know, c cars that work great. Worldwide implications. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. It absolutely does. Um, all right. So I think, Bob, what we're going to do is come back with you in the next segment, talk about some other ramifications of this legacy fund, um, discuss some of the bills that you were referencing, touch on 1380. So we've got a lot of stuff to cover. Okay? Great. Great. All Very right, good. folks, hang with us. We will be back in just a minute or so. We're the ladies of another view, bringing you a fresh view on local issues and different perspectives you won't get on the mainstream media. Watch us weekday afternoons at 4.30 Central Time on Beck News and at Beck.News. When you're buying windows, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Hi, I'm Jesse with The Window Source. We only sell you the best windows and doors for the best price. Call The Window Source. Just because you pay less, doesn't mean you get less. If you don't know what's going on in education in this country, then you don't know what's going to happen in the future of this country. And it's important. I'm Dr. Duke. And I'm Katie. Watch The Dr. Duke Show weekdays at 4 p.m. Central Time on Beck TV. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature gyros with the region's only gyro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to hold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. 
Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. All right, welcome back. It's No Apologies, and we have Bob Harms with us, uh, one of the guys that was instrumental in the in implementation of the Legacy Fund. We're talking about the Legacy Fund and the earnings and what it means and how it prevents us from getting into a very bad place because we're in a situation in which we rely on the commodity known as oil. Um, so we kind of covered the history there um, and the state's financial position. You referenced that there were a few bills with maybe only one left. Can you kind of touch on what bills we saw in the legislature, what was the outcome and where we're at right now with sure. only about two days left? Sure. So there are really four bills that I think uh, were keenly focused on legacy. Um, 1431, uh, that's called the uh, legacy bonding bill, and that started in the House at about $680 million. Went over to the Senate, got loaded up to 1.1 billion there. The Senate um, cut it back to the original House version, mm -hmm. 680 million. Mysteriously, I'm not sure as to why, passed it out of the Senate, went to the governor. Mm -hmm. At 680 million dollars of, of bonding, it's mostly water projects, and we all probably would support the water projects themselves. A couple of uh, concerns that I had about that bill, um, one is that it uh, it issues six hundred eighty million dollars of legacy bond legacy fund bonds, uh, and then those bonds are paid for by legacy fund earnings, and so you have a a twenty year funding stream that pays for those bonds issued by City of Fargo, Minot, uh, a host of other water projects, and a couple of other smaller items. But that's a that's a key concern. It it essentially dedicates. Um, about a billion dollars of future earnings that would have otherwise gone into the legacy fund permanent uh, mm -hmm. or be available for meeting the primary need that we've talked about before. So right. 1431 is, uh, is one bill, um, probably the key policy concern. I would have two key policy concerns. One is the fact that legacy fund earnings are being used to pay the bond mm -hmm. payments themselves. Right. And two, really the, the water community is kind of double dipping on that deal. Um, they have the resources trust fund that comes out of oil revenue as well, and that funds most of our water projects, whether it's water development or flood control projects in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. That fund at, uh, at its high point, I think, was generating about $800 million per biennium. Uh, so they have that fund already. Now they're sort of double dipping into the legacy fund to front load these these yeah. uh, projects on. So that's one House Bill fourteen thirty one. Let me just say one one of the biggest concerns I have with that. Yeah. Uh, my perspective is that uh, I understand the lure of wanting to borrow because interest rates are so low. You can borrow, do something big infrastructure now. Yeah. The construction costs are only going to get higher. However, you you cannot get away from the idea that not only are we spending the legacy fund earnings right now for ongoing spending really right but by bonding we're committing future legislatures legacy fund earnings on what it's already it's already committed yeah. we're, 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 we're handcuffing them well that's exactly right and that's a that's a key policy concern in some of these other bills that we're going to talk about too is that what we're doing is we're essentially preempting um, future legislatures um, thinking that in 2021, we know exactly what our state's needs will be for five years or 10 years or 15 years or 20 years. Yeah, nobody that, we, know that. that we know better <laughs> right. than they might. And one of the things that we've talked about, I've said openly, 
Um, the legacy fund doesn't have any earmarks or designated purposes, uh, and we argued about that, debated in the 2009 legislative session, and we arrived at the conclusion that best to not have any attachments, earmarks, uh, uh, expressed purposes, so that a legislature in 2025 can better address the needs of our uh, people then, as opposed to us presuming to know what the, those would be in 2009. So that's a key, that's a key policy objection I have with a, a good share of the bills that address legacy funds, is they presume to know better um, in 2021 what our state's needs will be in 2025 yep, or exactly. 27 or 29. Yep, yeah, well said. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the bills would be House Bill 1431. Okay, yeah. and what other bills are we? Well, the other one, I didn't pay that much attention to this one. I opposed it for a couple reasons, but that's House Bill 1425. And House Bill 1425 to most people would be known as let's invest legacy fund dollars in North Dakota. And that's a great idea. Of course. I'm there isn't a, a North Dakotan <laughs> that would disagree with the idea right. that we should be investing legacy fund dollars in our state. I don't think anybody would, agree, would, mm -hmm. would disagree with that notion. Um, the problem that the bill has is it gets kind of a schizophrenic uh, treatment because uh, the bill says these are targets, these are not mandates. Um, but it gets talked about in the press as if they are mandates. Mm -hmm. And 20% of the uh, fund is supposed to be invested in North Dakota. Now, if, if the legislature was going to spend that 20%, they would actually have to reach a two-thirds threshold supermajority that uh, is called for by the Constitution. But, mm -hmm. So that's one aspect of that 1425. The other thing it does is it creates a... Uh, uh, basically a local infrastructure uh, revolving loan fund uh, at a 2% cost. Now, you know, I, I grew up in Tioga. I want Tioga to have good financing. I want they to have good roads and, and water systems and all that. But it does uh, take 2% uh, is the legislatively established interest rate for local government. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other thing that you have to look at is uh, the... Legacy Fund makes about 9.5% most recently on an annualized basis. Uh, if you go back to 2020, it's really 6%. I think that's more of a legitimate number over the long haul. Mm -hmm. So sure. you're going to take 6% of the earnings and reduce it automatically down to 2%. So you're, so you're giving away 4% of the earnings. So that's another uh, thing that I didn't particularly like about that. The other thing about that bill is it also speaks to... Uh, an exemption of the prudent investor rule, uh, which causes some uh, some concerns. And then the other thing is that uh, it has some language in it that um, a North Dakota uh, firm has preference um, to manage the legacy fund portion of that uh, of that bill. And as you listen to the hearing uh, testimony, it's not a mandate, but yeah, you know, we want North Dakota firms to uh, manage and take care of our money but we also um, run into a problem if we say, hey, the harms financial company is going to manage the uh, legacy fund piece because I'm located in North Dakota. I, I may not be qualified. There may be a better firm in Sioux Falls. Or mm -hmm. Who knows? So that's, a, that's another bill. And then the third one, and the only one that remains, is House Bill 1380, and that's probably the one that's got the most uh, challenges, I think, because of some of the policy issues. Uh, it does a couple things. Um, it mandates that we spend 8% of the earnings in a biennium. That's 4% annually. That's different than any of the recommendations that we've gotten. Uh, there was a study done in 2014 by the Great Plains Institute. Um, took several uh, dozen North Dakota leaders around. Took them months. They debated. Their recommendation to the legislature was save 75% of the earnings, invest 25%. Um, we're doing just the opposite. We're going to spend 75 to 90 uh, percent of the earnings as opposed to saving most of it. So that's a that's a key concern. Eight percent that came out of the house uh, at uh, six percent, a three and three. Mm -hmm. That was one problem. The other thing that it does is it sets up uh, 10 or 11 different buckets. They call mm -hmm. it streams, but mm -hmm. it's sure. it's it's got a bucket 20 percent for this and 25 percent for that and 30 percent for this and 15 percent for that and 5 percent for this. 
And that's a, that's a concern just from a budgeting standpoint. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had Rod Backman on the radio uh, talking about this, and Backman was the OMB director for Schaefer and for Holden. And he said, you know, really what you should be doing from a budgeting perspective is having people come in and compete for dollars as opposed to establishing these buckets that, that now idea. are their, it's their money. So yep. that's, yep. the process yep. is people bad. view it as their money. Exactly. And then the other thing that we're going to do with, with these 10 or 11 buckets, that we'll create these constituencies that expect that money yes. to remain theirs, whether it's the university system or the tourism uh, department or the highway department or, or whomever. Yeah. Um, that's and it a becomes problem. an entitlement. That's exactly right. <laughs> and then try to take that money yeah. back. And here's yeah. another, this is another problem that really rubs me wrong on this one, is 1380. Again, these are ongoing appropriations, so they last forever. And the last thing that it does is it calls, calls for the legacy fund to pay the tab. Yep. So legacy fund wow. earnings, yeah. once again, being used to pay for these bills, and back to your point, we're preempting equally smart legislators in the future for years and years to come. Mm -hmm. Big concern. Just a brilliant yeah. analysis of what's going on with the Legacy Fund. Yeah. Thank you very yeah, much so. for coming today, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Happy to do it. You bet. Appreciate Thank you. it. Appreciate it. Folks, uh, hang with us. We've got brain food next. We'll be right back. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Spas, etc. Yeah, yeah. You've come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, shuffle boards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Maiden and Bismarck. Forty years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Hero's with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to pull them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. All right, welcome back to No Apologies. Food. You guys, you made it. 
Thanks for hanging in there. It is our final segment before we close the night, and it is brain food. Now, uh, my very first word, it, I cannot tell you where I saw it, but it makes me laugh because I just like all of the synonyms. But the word is drub. It just, it's a fun word. It just sounds funny. It is a verb, and the definition of drub is to beat severely. <laughs> <laughs> to, to berate critically or to beat severely or to defeat decisively. So if you drub something, you bash it, you batter it, you beat it. Uh, another one would be flog, hammer, lambast or lambaste. Um, maybe tan, thrash, thump, trop, wallop, uh, tromp, wallop, or uh, work over. It is meaning a drub. A sentence in which you would hear the word drub was, a crowd was drubbing the purse snatcher when the police arrived on the scene, or we drubbed our traditional football trial arrivals so badly that it was basically no contest. So, hmm. drub. Drub, 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 drub. It is a fun word. Yes. All right. Mine. Pull her up. Uh, this is a picture of citrus fruits. So citrus fruits we always think of as vitamin C, and it was on a previous brain food I talked about rose hips and I even our state that. flower having a ton so of vitamin C. So why am I talking about vitamin C? Well, not only is it helpful with COVID because mm -hmm. it helps with uh, long its co collagen and, and, and decreases the likelihood of transmission of the virus. Anyway, that's not even the main point. Scurvy. Oh yeah, and you do not scurvy. Want scurvy. So <laughs> the thing is, I thought it was interesting because scurvy. Uh, is what we hear about sailors having, Pretty and much they is, did. Yeah, but it's been kind of... Oh yeah, it's gone because it's easy to take care of. You know, just take some vitamin C right. capsules. But the problem is, so you need vitamin C for collagen. So there were hair problems and muscle problems and teeth problems. The sailors. They're, yeah, very achy, and a ton of things. And what they found is like, hey, if you just have some lemons and limes, mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's the way we heard it. It's a little bit more interesting because there are a lot of it occurred to me like, well, then why don't people in, in, in northern climates have scurvy in the old days? Sure. If it's just lemons, limes, and oranges. Right, because we don't have that. But there's actually uh, things like Brussels sprouts, broccoli, bell peppers ha have more vitamin they C. They do. For some I did reason, know we that. just think about vitamin C mm -hmm. in those citrus fruits. So um, that's why people in northern climates, and, and what's very interesting too is, the sailors that when, when they would go to Asia, what, they, what the captains did is preemptively they planted trees and gardens on islands that were stopover points nice. so they could collect. And if someone was suffering there. scurvy, they left them on the island ah. so they could recuperate and oh, have plenty of vitamin C. I never knew that. Yeah, I thought cool. that was interesting. Very cool. Well, this next one, this next brain food comes uh, compliments of Secretary of State Al Jager. So a shout out to him for sending this out to the media. You may have missed it, but yesterday was bird day. Now, I know this is really tiny and hard for you to see probably, but I'm going to read it for you. It says, bird day to promote and encourage the conservation and enjoyment of one of nature's most attractive features and to honor the birth and work of naturalist John James Audubon, who made America's birds known to the world through his drawings and vivid prose. April 26th of each year is hereby designated as Bird Day in the state of North Dakota. So yesterday was Bird Day. This is the actual designation on the next one. As you can see really close there, it says Bird Day. Uh, and then the next one is a little bit of what was going on in the bill too. So here is a little reading for you. Bird Day is a special day set aside to teach the school children of the United States and Canada the importance of protecting birds. The graceful flight of the birds and their color and song have inspired artists, poets, and musicians. Inventors studied birds for 1,000 years before men learned to fly first kites, then gliders, and their airplanes. Birds help keep the balance of nature. They eat more than 300 weed seed for every square foot of land in the United States. One bird may eat 5,000 to 15,000 weed seeds per day. So it was all hmm. in this amazing... You know what I like best about that what is I looked it? at the small language. Right. There were two no votes. Right. I would have been one of the no right. votes. Right. I know this. I, I know. I like, thought this the is same just thing. Stupid. I did literally think of that. I, I. That's so funny that you say that because I was going to actually tell you that I looked it up. It was on on Friday, January thirty first, nineteen seventy five, that this passed in the House. It was ninety five. Interesting. Get this. Ninety five eyes, two nays, and five absent, which is one hundred and two. Uh -huh. votes if you add them up. Yep. And then in the Senate, it was 44 ayes, four nays, and three absent, which is half of that, or 51. So at that point in our House and our Senate, we had, we had 51, 51 and 102. 51 districts. So I thought that was interesting to note as well. So bird day is a yeah. special day. Because I can't, do you, I don't remember, there is a range. We can have um, something like 47 to 53 or something mm -hmm. like that, districts, so I don't know. 
And it'd be interesting, we may. We, with redistricting, might get some new districts. You, they might just add one to Fargo, who knows? Mm -hmm. All right, so mine, next one. So the best thing you can do with citrus is make yourself a nice drink. <laughs> now, um, I've got, tasty, though, I've got a New York sour there, and this is something I came across just a couple years ago. Love it. So let me tell you first, a whiskey sour. Uh, it's just bourbon, simple syrup, which is just sugar water, mm -hmm. um, lemon juice, and an egg white. Now, you don't necessarily need the egg white, but that makes it, it gives a little oh, creaminess, fro frothiness, right. Now, there's also a stone sour in which you add orange juice along with the lemon juice. Super, super Yum, good with bourbon. That sounds super so good. Tasty. Now, the New York sour, which at my old restaurant before we had, the, we closed it because of COVID. Thank you, Doug Burgum. Um, it was, we called it a Yankee sour. Nevertheless, it's a whiskey sour, mm -hmm. but after you make your drink, you put, they say a, the, the, the typical recipe is a half ounce of a fruity red wine. I think a quarter ounce of like a port, mm. just over the top. You just put it over the top. Uh, oh my God, you guys, you gotta, yeah. you gotta taste it. Look it up, write down the recipe. Super simple to make. Um, you're going to enjoy it like interesting. crazy. Sour drinks. Well, join us tomorrow. It'll be a, an interesting show because he will be I'm gone. Not here. He will not be here. So I will have, I will be the purveyor of the Bourbon Bureau tomorrow. And Keep I an will eye have on her, with folks. Me. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I will have with me Andrea Toman from Ladies of Another View here. And we'll have two different really, really interesting guests. I hope you don't miss it. Oh, when you're the host, it's really, really interesting. Really, really yeah, whatever. I'm going to be back on Thursday, folks. Uh, watch us tomorrow night and really watch us the next night. <laughs> All right. Bye. Next up, No Filter with Debbie. <laughs>